Okay, Judge Costello had to stretch the law to find me guilty of illegal parking. When you type magistrate courts into Google, you get all kinds of references to Australian courts. This literally was a kangaroo court. Nobody took an oath before their testimony. There was no bailiff. There was no prosecutor. Judge Costello, she called it a formal court, but it really seemed like a very loose formal. Costello made an announcement that everybody had to take any recording device they have and keep it outside of the courtroom. But cops were exempt from having to do that? She gave some vague reference to an Oregon law that permits her to prevent recording devices from being used in the courtroom. I told her that my iPad had all of my notes on it. I was like, hey, I got an iPad. She then told her scribe to fetch a piece of paper so that I could write my notes down. But I reiterated that I probably have about two pages of notes that I'd have to rewrite. Then she asked to look at my iPad, so I walked up and she saw the notes that I have. And after she gave a careful analysis of my iPad, she decided that a sticker would be placed over the camera lens of my iPad, and that will do. At that time, I walked my, after that, I walked my iPods and camera the, out to the, my car so that I had no kind of recording device in the courtroom. I was afraid that the cops would frisk me at any time. Many courts make sure to check your bags and your person with those electronic scanners before you enter the courtroom. They didn't do that at this courtroom, but I was afraid it would just happen spontaneously. Let me take a minute to mention that the mayor, Catherine Simonetti, also sat in on my trial as, uh, as a part of the, the audience. There's also the police chief, Scott Sanders, several other cops, whom I'm not familiar with, and then the witnesses, Trevor Sani, the park host, uh, Mr. Cooper, and the public works director, Kevin Urban. Also, there were two or three other people there to witness the events. There was only one other person at the trial who was pleading on that day uh, in the same situation as me. I get the feeling that either not too many people get tickets or very few people dispute their tickets. It, court was only held once a month. My guess is it's the latter that very few dispute tickets in this court. People are probably know how corrupt this judicial system is, and not every system is like that. In this in this town, it's 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 pretty corrupt. The police give a strong impression that they actually run the city government. If you have any questions about the city at City Hall, you go to the police desk. If you have any questions about the city, you go to the police desk for those questions, and there is a good chance you won't be satisfied with their answers. Between the two of us defendants who were there, I was chosen first simply because I put my name on the sign-in list uh, first. My trial may have lasted about 45 minutes, while the other guy only needed three minutes after me. Looking back, I kind of feel bad about making him sit through the whole trial. Uh, I believe his charge was illegal camping. I've talked to him. I was called and approached to a desk in front of the judge. The three um, like witnesses or accusers sat in a long desk to my left. The room isn't exactly designed for court hearings. It's more designed for the city council meetings, I believe. Judge Costello mentioned rules and gave further warnings about recordings in the courtroom. She was very adamant about those pesky recording devices. I offered to let anybody search me for a recording device. She repeated her warning again, and again I said that she could have someone search me. It felt a little like being in a gangster movie where the gangster was worried about someone wearing a wire. I told her that I'm new to the court procedures, 
that I would have gotten a public defender if I could have. But this kind of charge apparently does not warrant a public defender. That is probably what allows the judge to be so biased because it operates under the radar of, of uh, need for public defenders. Judge Costello said that the claimants give their testimony, testimony first, then I can ask them questions, then I give my testimony, then they can ask me questions, then they give their final statements, then I give my final statements, and then she decides. So Trevor talks first about how he interacted during the event. I have it all on video, so there really isn't much to add there. Then uh, Camp Cooper, Camp Host Cooper speaks. And this is where the lying is brought to obscene levels. He claimed I looked like I stole a car, bounced back and forth between the front and the back. Car hood was up for 30 minutes, probably. I had a hand wrapped in a jacket. He claimed to offer me a jump. I worked on car for... Th 30 minutes, Cop tr uh, Trevor showed up, he called Trevor, Trevor showed up, Cooper explained everything to the cop um, away from me, then Trevor came over and talked to me, after Trevor gave me a ticket, he left, and this is all testimony from Cooper, another car showed up, and I worked on my car for another 30 minutes with this other person who showed up, Cooper was about to call the cops again, but uh, I, I left too quickly for him with the other guy after we got done working on the car. Camp Post Cooper said he couldn't even work on his own car in the parking lot. There used to be some kind of business on the other side of the street and people would come over to the Sturdivant Park and do oil changes. Then the park manager, Kevin Urban, talked about how he was on the radio with, cop, with uh, Trevor and interpreted the city ordinance for illegal parking. Then came my chance to question the s three subjects. I started with Trevor, but only asked a few questions, which didn't seem all that revealing. It, our interaction is all on video. I quickly moved to Camp Post Cooper and asked what kind of medications he was on. Some people gave a sound of shock, but the judge explained to everyone that my question was relevant because it establishes whether Cooper's mind was clear or not. Cooper said he takes blood pressure pills because he had a heart attack. Then I asked him if his eyes were good. Did he wear glasses that he, cur that he currently was wearing? He said that he was wearing those same prescription glasses on the day that, uh, between the court and the incident. Then I asked him if he saw any grease on my hands. No. Tools laying around the car. No. What changes occurred in the car that he noticed? None. What was the make and model of the car? Don't know. Color? Can't remember. What alerted me, him to me? My darting around my car. Where did he see me from? And he said the back of his camper. I noticed many... I noticed many memory errors in his judgment to the situation, but I may not have communicated his lack of memory or spotty memory clearly enough to the courts. I had no questions for Keith Urban, but in hindsight and retrospect, he was the guy to ask about the ordinance interpretation since he talked about it, and that's what the judge wants you to focus your, your questions on, their, their testimony. Uh, the judge, yeah, based on their testimony, and... I didn't ask him anything about uh, how he interpreted the ordinance. I didn't question it at all, and I, I kind of wish I would have done that. That would have made for a better um, discussion over the very ordinance that we were, we were, uh, what I was being charged with. After my questions, then came my testimony. And that is where I talked about putting my car hood up to signal a friend whom I contacted on Craigslist. I intended to get an estimate and an evaluation for the potential uh, work on f the fluid levels for the brake fluid, since it was running low too fast, and I had a, a spongy clutch pedal. There was no there was no work done on the car. I and when. Camp Host Cooper approached me. I said that I was reading my book um, and not working on my car at the time he approached me. 
the judge asked me what book I was reading, and I gave an answer. Was she trying to make a point? Probably memory. Then came the part where these three blind mice asked me questions, okay? Urban, Kevin Urban asked me, or Keith Urban, whatever his name is, if I was looking furtively around my car. I denied it. Then he asked if I had a video that is titled, How to Bait a Cop. I objected to this question and called it irrelevant. The judge overruled me with some lousy excuse as to how it is relevant. And, um, I just didn't understand what, yeah, what she said exactly, but I decided to answer the question and say I have a thousand, I have thousands of videos on my channel of a wide variety of topics. I tried to explain that I record everything I feel like the cops are just a part of it. But for some reason, whenever I record a cop, the viewers, the views gain a much larger numbers than my other, my other videos. So I decided to make a separate channel for the cop stuff. Okay. And, and, uh, yeah, with cop baiting, I go into further, um, explanation. I may have had a video on how to bait a cop, but there really isn't anything that is damaging to the police in the video. I explained that my very lifestyle of traveling and sleeping on my car puts me in danger of, of cops approaching and asking me questions very frequently. So I've uh, decided to re record the interactions and, and also uh, have fun with uh, the titling. Judge Cost, in the end, Judge Costello ruled in favor of the plaintiffs for $50. She didn't care about the wording of the ordinance, so I failed on that. It just she didn't want to talk about the ordinance at all. Uh, instead, she focused on who was more credible, okay, to her, and also my cop baiting videos. She said that cop baiting is a very serious matter, and no one should intentionally put the lives of cops in danger for the entertainment of a video. So. Uh, that's that's what I have written here, and after after uh, the ruling, she banged the gavel. That was it. Uh, you can make your payment at this uh, cashier guy, uh, but I didn't I didn't pay a dime. I I I, I guess I kind of argued with the guy because the police chief then whined to the judge that I was being rude to the 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 finance guy, so. He, he he got her to like call me back to her, the judge. So and he, the chief came to me and was like, "The judge wants to see you again." So I walk over to her and she was like, "You need to treat my cashier guy with respect, and and not be abrasive and 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 all that." And then that's when I started asking her her about the questions. How can I look up my name on? the internet and see you know how much is owed and then she explained well you're not on the criminal record you're on a different different type of record and I'm, I'm like okay well what if I wanted to volunteer my time and she's like well we really don't have any any volunteer options around here she kind of sounded like she considered it and then she's like oh we don't have volunteer op I, that's something I want to appeal just uh, based on my indig indigency and then she gave me some kind of reference I was like I asked also what if I don't pay. And then she was like, well, and then I'll, I'll file some kind of injunction. So I need to, I want to look up that. She gave me a exact word, injunction something. I wrote it down. And then at, that was the end. She was like, get out of my courtroom right after that. All right. She didn't want to talk to me anymore. I was forced to take my hat off, which I understand. I've, I've been in Senate chambers at the cat and some capitals where you have to take your hat off. So I understand that. I walked out to my car, got some things. I was going to go for a walk, and that's when Trevor started yelling at me. You can't stay parked here. Your business is done. You need to drive out of here. I was gonna. I was just going to walk um, down the street to, to burn off some energy, and that's when they, and there's like five other cops out there just all talking, and he was yelling at me um, being parked in the city hall parking lots unauthorized because only only certain vehicles could be parked there at that time so okay 
fine. I, I drove out and that's, uh, and then, um, when I got down the road, maybe five, 10 minutes, that's when I saw a cop, a Coco cop in my rear view mirror. And I was outside the city limits and this guy was just following me so closely in the left lane, in my blind spots, right behind me. Then he turned out onto the the uh, way station, slowed down, turned to the uh, way station, and then fell way back behind me. And then suddenly he, he pulls back into the, the highway and, and boom, he's right back behind me again. I didn't know what to think of it. This is, that was definitely a stressful moment. And I was actually talking on camera on my other camera at the time and, and talking in the moment about it. I was just discussing like the case and stuff and yeah, that's that incident occurred. So I was making comments. I never caught the cop on camera because I just I just kind of had the camera sitting around the car I didn't really have it pointed. So um, that's it